Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our Ask the Expert session on Is it the Right Time for Oracle Policy Automation? We still have a few people joining, so we're going to give it about 30 more seconds and then we'll get started. Good afternoon, this is Christy Green with CPI.Solutions. Welcome to today's Ask the Expert session on Oracle Policy Automation. Also on the call with me are Colin Doggett, our senior, well actually our director of project management, Derek Chen, our director of CX Solutions, and Alexis Dwyer, senior solutions analyst. We do want this to be an interactive session, so please feel free to use the link at the top of the screen to submit your questions. It can also be, the link can also be found in the chat box, so you can click on it at any time. And you don't have to wait, submit your questions as they come to you so that we can be prepared to answer them at the end of the call. First, before I hand it off to Colin, I want to give you a little bit of information about CPI. We are excited to be celebrating our 35th anniversary this year. We have been an Oracle Gold Partner specialized in Service Cloud for a little over seven years. And if you've ever had the opportunity to work with our team in the past, you'll know that Colin and Derek and Alexis are well versed on the topic of Service Cloud. With that said, I'll hand this over to Colin for today's session on Oracle Policy Automation. Colin? Thank you, Christy, for the introduction. Thank you for your attendance today and today's session to review and learn a little bit more about the Oracle Policy policy automation tool set. It's my pleasure to introduce the tool to you guys. Uh, OPA or Oracle Policy Automation, uh, it includes a lot of deep capability to help empower your organization. It provides an uncomplicated view into how you can manage policies, create questionnaires and interview experiences for your constituents. And it's really geared first and foremost for your business users and not, it doesn't take a developer first approach in how it's developed and how it's utilized in the day-to-day -day, day -day -day operations and usability. It's my goal that at the end of this conversation, you walk away with a greater understanding of how Oracle policy automation might be used within your organization. And also can see and learn a little bit about how the tool isn't as complicated as some tools could be. Now, first and foremost, you might be asking yourself, what is Oracle policy automation? And that's a common question we get uh, from users when they're looking and evaluating the tool. Uh, first and foremost, it is a tool that's really designed to provide a consistent user experience for your constituents. It uses consistent design principles and those can be adapted and utilized across multiple interview experiences uh, to really follow and standardize the methodology that your organization wants to use. Some of the benefits of this are that from a user and business standpoint, you're creating one interview for multiple platforms. These can be used across both web and mobile platforms with its responsive technology. And we also have the ability that in some use cases, the interview experience or the interview can be taken offline and utilized by a constituent or by your business, and the data can be uploaded after the interview experience is complete. First and foremost as well, 
uh, OPA or Oracle Policy Automation uses a process-based approach to build capability for your organization. Uh, to accomplish this, it's not always about you know how many FTE or how many full-time equivalents can you replace with OPA. It's really about empowering your constituents to use self-service as a platform uh, and to utilize your FTEs for those hard questions. So OPA allows us to drive decision making and that behavior at the constituent level and leave the hard items to your FTEs. Oracle Policy Automation also takes an agile approach to its management where we have full version control that can be driven through the tool. Uh, we always have the ability to revert back to prior versions of interview experiences, but we also for, have the ability to change as the missions and the uh, and data changes within your organization. You want to have a record of that from the past. And one of the most common questions we get about Oracle policy automation is, you know, it is a great front end tool, it's a great form builder. But what can I do with that data? And the beauty of the product is that we have the ability to both integrate to a variety of CRM platforms, as well as other data repository applications that exist in the market today. Now, some of you might be saying, you know, great, Colin, another new tool. You know, what can I really use it for in my in my business? And the the applications really do uh, extend very much across platforms across verticals uh, a lot of common use cases we use the tool for are things that empower your constituents such as benefit calculators uh, mortgage calculators employee screening uh, one that we have a lot of use cases for today with organizations are replacement of paper processes. Uh, a very common application in the early 90s where a lot of organizations were placing applications and processes into PDF. And the process was that I would print your PDF, fill it out and send it back. And that's really not the most, you know, the most fluid way to provide data to your organization. So a lot of a lot of applications we see are replacing paper processes to use OPA as a data collection front end uh, and a decision making platform for constituents to get data back to your organization. And to help kind of demonstrate the use cases behind Oracle Policy Automation, we're going to take a look at a couple examples today. We're actually going to demo the product so you get an opportunity to see not only uh, how the product can be used, but the simplicity that is OPA and how it can be driven towards a business first approach uh, and not a developer first approach. The first example we're going to look at is how the application can be used for an emergency response organization uh, or to help facilitate constituents to place requests to an emergency response organization. So what we're going to look at is a, a simple interview that's been designed so a constituent member has the ability to submit uh, a report of an emergency or a car accident. And what I'm going to pull over onto my screen here is that we're actually going to look at uh, the tool itself. So what we're looking at now is the front end for where the business would manage an interview from. Uh, it's very graphically influenced where, again, we're not writing code to actually build these interviews, but we're doing it through a graphical user interface that is really uh, centered around the business first. And it has a little bit of that look and feel you would see in Microsoft applications as well. As I mentioned before, with that business first approach where we're not centered on developing in a, in a coded language, uh, our rule set or how we drive decisions is really based on, you know, simple rules that are written in, you know, plain English terms. Uh, if you're familiar with Word or Excel uh, or some simple development language, you would be able to adapt this really well to your organization. We also have the ability where uh, we have a rule assistant to help users build rules 
uh, such as if, then, or statements to help facilitate how the interview interacts with your constituent. We're able to manage our data elements through the data tab. And really the, the core element to the interview experience is really that design element and that look and feel for what you're presenting to your constituent members. And what we're able to do is through the, the GUI here is really manage the look and feel of the interview. Uh, we can manage some of the simple aspects of how things are executed. And you can see here, as I click on different elements of the interview, I'm gonna get presented different options with my toolbar behind how it can be managed. And again, we're managing things through the graphical interface, not code. So again, these are you know, simple to use examples of how we can configure an interview if we wanna show and hide fields, make things optional, and so on. Without further ado, we're actually gonna look at this interview and how it's executed, and we'll actually go through a few examples of how it can, how different elements are incorporated into the interview experience. So we're looking at our emergency response, and we're able to incorporate language to help facilitate the purpose of the interview. We can incorporate help text. We have the ability to tell the constituent where they are in the process. So we're at step two, and these, these again are configurable. We can, in our accident report, define how many vehicles are involved. And we can also give the option for, you know, defining what you see at the accident site graphically. Uh, so again, graphical first is a core concept behind this in making it as easy as we can for the end user. And one really neat feature of the tool is we're able to incorporate uh, geolocation into this and this is out of the box and we can do this using location services within web framework or mobile framework and we're able to tell where someone is when they're completing the process and there's always that potential where you know if it's not the right location we can give them the ability to state their location to make their report they can give us any additional information and make their submission. And this is really where the power is. At this point, uh, we can give feedback to the constituent for how to execute behavior around, you know, maybe some of the things that they see at the accident site. But we can also, through integration uh, with different CRM platforms, different backend data systems, uh, in our emergency response example, uh, this could be sent to a 911 center uh, or other emergency response centers for executing, you know, going to a site to actually take action. The second example we're gonna look at is how OPA can be utilized for something like an energy management company, a power company, to help solicit your constituents, help solicit constituents to actually drive different behavior through providing advice to them. Again, we're gonna look at our energy saver example. And again, it's laid out very, very simple for a business user to manage. We have our rules, which are written in Word. We have our data elements, which are in uh, plain standard terms. And we have our interview. And we have the ability to import different data elements in here. In our example, we see we've used pictorial representations to represent how an interview could be completed. We're actually gonna demonstrate this interview. And this one's a little more advanced from the standpoint of, we're gonna intake a number of different data points to actually render a decision uh, or advice to an end user or to the constituent member on taking different behavioral actions in their home. We can see here, we can drive a questionnaire. And then we have different formatted lists and selectors we can utilize to help drive a decision. In these menus, these are all configurable uh, without code. We can have drop down menus, we can have Boolean selectors. And one key feature is for the constituent member is letting them know where they are in the process. And we're able to show that as they progress through the interview, through interview stages at the top. And we can let them know where they are 
on the process uh, by showing which screen they're on as well. Based on the information I'm providing, I would say I'm not the most energy efficient individual. And based on that, the interview allows us to give advice to that end user based on all of those values we've determined through the, the flow of the interview. We're able to give advice based on that for, in our example, how they can conserve energy. Again, the use cases abound for how OPA can be utilized in an organization. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to take some questions from the audience on around Oracle policy automation and how it may apply to your organization. Our first question comes from an anonymous user in the audience. And the question that we've received is, I understand OPA is better for building guided assistance and troubleshooting modules. How so? Some of the powerful elements around OPA are that we can get very complex in the decision making or in decision process in the outcomes that we produce to the constituent. And OPA really through the rule engine allows us to do that uh, with a great deal of flexibility. The other thing that is a benefit around OPA is that we can incorporate it into a number of different platforms uh, in your website and web properties of an organization. We also have the ability that if your organization uses things such as chat, uh, you can incorporate that into the interview. Or if you need to provide, uh, we usually call them outs, where if they need further assistance, they have the ability to do that as well. And a couple things that are part of the Oracle policy automation are that we can also produce uh, outputs in PDFs and reports to the constituent. And we can do that based on the data that's been provided. Uh, an example might be that, you know, in our energy example, we want to output the decision, not just on a visual on their screen, but to give them the ability to email that feedback to themselves uh, or provide them a PDF of that. We can do that through the tool as well. Great question. Uh, you know, Colin, uh, if I could add just a, another comment as well to to that last question. Uh, you know, it's a, definitely a fantastic question. Um, you know, and I, I think it's important for us to define the difference between something like Oracle Policy Automation versus a, an inherent tool and service cloud like guided assistance. Um, you have to kind of really understand what the sole purpose is of this interview and in the example that that was asked, um, they're looking really more for a troubleshooting type module. And so if this is troubleshooting, uh, the guided assistance would be very, very helpful if you're trying to route them towards a specific existing knowledge article. So for instance, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, and actually if we use that energy guide, you know, if you didn't know what type of light bulb, then what we may have is we may have a series of descriptions or even pictures that might help you. And then we might route you to a knowledge article. But in certain instances, uh, the OPA version of this might also then say, well, if it is this type of decision, then please provide more information for us, um, really for the purpose of adding more insight and attributes to your eventual ticket if it does feed into Service Cloud. And, and so that's really kind of the difference if, and, and hopefully that helps you guys to define, you know, really where one situation may be much more suited for guided assistance and one situation may be much more suited for uh, Oracle policy automation. So hopefully that helps. Great. Thank you, Derek. Our next question from the audience is, how do we identify and avoid pain points in automation where users become frustrated rather than helpful? That's a great question, and it really comes down to design principle. Uh, there are elements within Oracle policy automation that we highly recommend utilizing. Uh, we refer to them as checkpoints or guides. Uh, what, first and foremost, for longer interviews, you need to let someone know it, where they are in the process so they are not left guessing at you know, how many more questions are they going to be asked before they get to the end. 
Uh, some other helpful points within Oracle Policy Automation are that we can incorporate help information as they progress through the interview. Uh, you could provide the outcomes, uh, not only at the end of the interview process, but as they progress through it. And sometimes the goal isn't always to get them all the way through it to get their information. You could provide that earlier in the experience. And we at CPI would be more than happy to you know, help facilitate for those that are in our audience that have specific use cases. We love an opportunity to maybe demo uh, how that might be impactful to your organization. Our next question comes from the audience as well. Can this be used as a standalone or is it require or does it require Oracle Service Cloud? And that's a that's a fantastic question. So Oracle Policy Automation is a standalone product. Uh, you do not need Oracle Service Cloud or Oracle Marketing Cloud to be able to utilize OPA. Uh, we do have the ability to uh, output the data to other CRM products as well as other backend data systems. Fantastic question. We have a number of other questions as well. So our next question from the audience is, oh, go one more here. Can OPA be used from a tablet or mobile device? So for example, could it be used by people in the field for inspections or something similar? And that, that's a fantastic question. So Oracle policy automation uh, for users that are online or on the internet, uh, they can access the interviews through, you know, it is agnostic to any browser type. Uh, so they can use Safari, Internet Explorer, uh, broad spectrum of, of different browsers. But one key tenant of the product is it does have an offline capability as well. So for the example of inspections, if a user had a tablet device and wanted to uh, go through and inspect, say, you know, ships in the Navy, for example, uh, they could take that device offline, uh, go and inspect their ships at port and come back to an office and upload that data at the conclusion of their workday. So that's a that's a fantastic question. And that's a, a use case we see becoming more and more common. And I would ask if there are any other questions in the audience, uh, please please go ahead and submit those now. I would also uh, like to offer that, you know, for those in the audience, if you have specific use cases that you're just not sure if Oracle Policy Automation is a great solution or not in your use case, uh, reach out to Christy Green uh, with the CPI.Solutions team. We'd be more than happy to set up a time where we can walk through that use case together and also, we have the ability where we can demo uh, what that solution might look like using the Oracle Policy Automation product. And we have one more question that's come through. Could OPA be used to determine warranty eligibility? And that question is yes. Uh, we actually do have a customer that uses OPA for warranty eligibility, uh, and that's a, a common example across the retail sector. Uh, so you could take, for example, if you have agents determining in that now, that's really easy to translate into an interview uh, and provide to your constituents. And based on the outcome, you could drive that that outcome to either you know maybe facilitate a repair or return, uh, or go to an audience in a call center environment or a technician environment uh, and really uh, save time for your organization by collecting a lot of the elements in advance of that person-to-person -person interaction. Yeah, and I think the other added point to that particular example, um, you know, especially if you're talking about warranty or potentially like an RMA type situation, what you'll find is that much of your agent time is really spent doing the back and forth uh, you know, really gauging eligibility, um, really trying to understand what it is that the customer is trying to do. And so with really kind of placing uh, Oracle policy automation on the front end, what you effectively do is you allow OPA to do that discussion for you. So while they're going through the logic, they 
they can really explore whether or not one are they eligible for whatever it is that they're trying to attempt whether it whether it is kind of returning their product or you know that they're submitting it for warranty um, and then from that on the back end then your your effective teams only are receiving validated qualified work so that they're not wasting their time doing doing extra correspondence Thank you, Derek. At this time, we don't have any additional questions. We, myself, as well as the CPI team that's on the call, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And feel free to reach out to Christy Green or C Green at cpi.solutions at any time. And we'll, we would like to have an opportunity to present how Oracle Poly, Policy Automation can be useful to your organization.